I'm lucky to live in a what was a very, very active music city. Um, so it's a nice environment, at least for me, to be both um, a musician and a contract or side person and an artist. So I am able to do both, which is great. And it allows you to kind of, at least for me, it's important. I, I enjoy doing a lot of different things. Um, so my artist side fulfills a lot of things that I want to do on a composition side stylistically, but by being um, part of a lot of different groups, it's, it's great. Um, I was lucky to have a good education and to be part of a great community and to find acceptance in that community. So here being part of a, a big, you know, 30 piece Motown you know, uh, tribute is one of the best things you can do. And I think that the singers in that group are some of the best singers that you'll ever hear sing that music. And to be part of that group is fantastic. And I think one of my favorite things I mean, I love being a front person, of course, but singing backups in the way that they were recorded precisely for such great singers that can front the band is one of the biggest privileges I could have as a singer. You know, when you feel the harmony lock in, there's something very special about that. It's not about one voice over another. It's about the voices together. I love that. And then I, I mean, I really enjoy being a classically trained singer as well. Um, and I, I run a choir where we do everything from classical to contemporary music and being able to share that with people who wouldn't otherwise have the courage or you know even just the time to do it which is really nice to share that experience via Zoom. And then, um, I mean, I love boogie and modern funk and that's the music that I make and I, um, I think that I desperately want to make music that makes people smile and dance and um, that makes you feel good. And not every genre has to be that. It just so happens that I love to do that, especially in a live setting. It's my favorite thing to watch a whole room, like whether they're really paying 100% attention to you or not, if they're having a great time, you just watch people smiling and, and really dancing. I miss that so much. You know, this is very interesting because, um, so I'm classically trained also, um, and, you know, and I'm jazz and commercial music. That's been most of my career. Uh, but I think there's this great benefit of having training and I think especially those two large sort of areas, you know, jazz and classical, because it sort of sets you up to really be able to do anything you want with music. I mean, this <laughs> you know what can't you do if you if if you can have success doing those and one thing that's interesting about something you said this thing you know people are having a good time they're hearing the music but maybe they're not focusing on the music you know and you know miles davis famously or infamously said you know don't call it jazz he says it's social music and it kind of gives a different sort of context for the purpose of, you know, jazz and commercial music as opposed to art music and what the sort of expectation is uh, for how you listen to that music, how much you're paying attention to what's going on. No less sophistication, but the, the purpose of the music is different than art music. So that's a, seems to be a sort of returning theme, uh, on these interviews is this sort of, um, you know, the difference between the way that those, uh, two, in, I, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I play a lot of clubs. Okay. So, and in playing in clubs, uh, matter of fact, I played this past Thursday. 
And on this past Thursday, um, was actually, this is interesting because this is the, the heaviest audience that we've had. Uh, we've been doing the second Thursdays thing with my court, with my quartet, Dr. Thunder quartet. And I mean, it's, it's clamorous. This, uh, I mean, people are talking and, and everybody's talking over everybody else and like this, but I also know that they're there to listen to the music and that's a different, you know, that that's a different experience than going to a concert hall mm -hmm. and you're not allowed to clap until the entire piece is over, you know? Yeah. So yeah. if you, so if you had to choose, choose one, what would it be? Oh, well, I would 100%. <laughs> I love, I mean, I have to say, I mean, there's something about the formality of these, like this litany of rules and social etiquette that comes with this classical music world. You know, I was kind of educated within it and led to believe that, um, you know, this was a way to be legitimized as a musician. And you know, that that's not, not going to leave me easily. But then when you get your first taste of touring and feeling what it's like to engage with people in the way that you described, where people can talk to each other about them having a good time and still be engaged in what's happening around them. And right. I, I mean, there's nothing that replaces that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I didn't expect that you were going to choose. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was setting you up.